Today is the day that we are going to launch this thing that we have been building for a long, long time. Oh my gosh, it's been at least a year and a half. Maybe, yeah, something, maybe almost two for some of us. Um, <clears throat> so we're pretty excited. We launched this thing in beta back in like late October of last year. And we've been working with our early um, users, some of our partners and, and uh, getting a lot of feedback, building new features, um, you know, seeing how people are using it, stabilizing our systems, making sure that we're ready for the scale, um, figuring out how we're going to price this thing. And uh, man, along the way, we've learned a lot. We've seen a lot of really cool stuff get built. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're going to show you some of it today. Last time, if you joined us a couple days ago, we talked about what dynamic content is, why we think it's important that you need to be thinking about this, the opportunities that it creates for your business to deliver remarkable kind of next level experiences, personalized dynamic experiences for your customers, which is what they're comparing you to because we're all getting used to that kind of stuff with our Amazons and our, and you know, all the stuff that we use day in and day out, right? We're used to our apps kind of conforming to us and, and learning about us and delivering the next step for us and making stuff easy, right? Very hard to do uh, up till now without an engineer or a team of engineers on your side. Dynamic content is going to allow you to do drag and drop your way to some really impressive stuff, both uh, internal processes and customer facing uh, systems that are going to be really impressive. A couple of our users have agreed to jump on with me today and show you what they've built. Now we're going to be taking a, uh, a major, a major uh, increase in uh, sort of complexity today, a big step up. So last time I showed you how to build a blog. A blog is about as easy as it gets, right? It's a, it's a, uh, an object that's called blog posts and it's a, it's a template and you fill up those templates with your blog posts and, and you kind of set up a page and boom, you're done. We went one step farther. We added blog comments, which is kind of interesting, right? It's a, it's a, another object that's related to blog posts as a child. And we created a form on our blog post pages so that people can type in their comment and the comment gets, excuse me, added to your Entreport account. And, uh, and then it is, it sh remember we showed how it, it shows up in that, uh, in that comment approval process as a card. And then you, we, I kind of had it set up. So you drag that card over to approved and then boom, it shows up dynamically on the appropriate page. It also shows up in the blog post record in your Entreport account. So you can see all the comments right there. It also shows up in the contact record. So you can see any one commenters uh, list of comments, pretty powerful stuff. <clears throat> but simple, simple as, it, as, as far as things go. We talked also about Airbnb, which is dramatically complex, right? Of course, that's a 800 engineers have been working on that for a decade or something like that. So hyper complex uh, system. Uh, today, we're going we're gonna to talk about a couple of systems that are so, somewhere in the middle. And we're going to start uh, with Ernesto Gutierrez. Let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Ernesto, hey, thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Okay, cool. You're here and we can hear you. This is great. Um, we, uh, are, we are stoked to have you. Um, so tell us about um, you. Tell us what you do, uh, you know, what your business is, and, uh, and, and, and then um, you know, what, what, the, what the big idea here is. Yeah, of course. Well, so I'm a, I'm a former practicing physician. Yeah. And uh, I've, been, I've been working on tech for, for a long time even before that. And uh, since we moved countries and medical licenses aren't exactly portable, I, uh, I turned my side gig, which was consulting and marketing and business for medical uh, professionals, into a full-time gig. So anyone yeah. working in health, we're helping them. And uh, Entreport is our poison of choice. And uh, we love it. And we've been bringing on clients from uh, all different walks of healthcare into Entreport. And it's just, it's just flexible. It allows us to build a bunch of things that, that they need, that they want. And that they were paying a bunch of people all over the place to do them, and we just have them in house now. So um, that's what we've been doing for the last couple of years. Awesome, awesome. So um, <clears throat> we have seen uh, you pretty active in the community uh, when since since Entreport um, Dynamic CMS came out last uh, last fall, and um, and you built a bunch of, of pretty interesting stuff. I think you uh, it was a couple of months ago, maybe you you uh, kind of recorded a video of it and, and blew right. all of our minds. Some people watching may have seen that, but I think um, it's definitely it's definitely worth reviewing, kind of in more depth. So um, tell us tell us what you did. 
So for, for one of our clients, she wanted to, she saw that a bunch of people were doing like uh, newsletters and Substack and ConvertKit and all these different uh, platforms. And she wanted to do one. And uh, before we before we started working with her, she had a blog and a site and, and WordPress. And uh, once we moved everything to Entreport, she just let go of that one. And then she wanted to start a, a newsletter. And she had been for several months sending out a newsletter um, in, in Entreport, but we didn't have a repository of previous issues, which is something that she wanted to. Yeah. And so that was around the time that the Dynamic CMS came out in, in beta and we started playing around with it. And we thought, you know what, I, I think we can pretty much replicate what you've got in Substack, plus with a cool uh, bunch of new features that I think are going to make life very, e very easy for us. You don't need to give money to somebody else. You don't need to build in somebody else's playground. And, um, and you know, let's, let's build it for you. And so we did. Uh, we created essentially a, a newsletter slash blog slash emailing. Um, so every time she publishes a new, a new article, it schedules it to be emailed to her newsletter subscribers and uh, and it's published in a repository where that it's that is searchable that is under her own domain uh, people can register to it so it's it's pretty pretty neat may i say so and that uh, cool. she's thrilled awesome so um i understand from our tech team that your sister situation should be good now why don't you take a quick look at it and see if you can let confirm me. that and i'll let you drive right. if, um, if you can let maybe refresh. a refresh yeah mm -hmm. We were just getting yep. the nest set up here. Okay, good. So why don't you go ahead and um, show us what, you, what you've what you done over there. All right. I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, so dynamic templates. So we did, we did a couple of things here. Uh, first, let me just show you what it looks like to the regular user. So this is, this is now the archive. Um, when somebody comes in here and they want to get the, the newsletter, as a matter of fact, just like in, in, in Substack, Right, and they can get each individual issue that she's published, and we got these things. And this is a dynamic template, which is actually really cool because we can come in and 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 have some fixed items like these ones that don't change or that can change uh, seasonally, like when she's launching something new or she has a new promo or anything like that. So we have all these things put right in place, and uh, and and then basically what we did on the on the back end was we used a custom object called posts. So we created these posts for her. And when she wants to come in here and create a new post, so for instance, this one, when she comes up with an idea, she just logs it in here directly. She has all her, her ideas around here. Now she's going on vacation. So she actually has been working a bunch of on, on these things and she has these uh, up in the queue. So if you look at it here, she already has this one scheduled for June 30th for April 7th, uh, July 7th and July 14th. So just open any of these and these are super easy. If you've, if you've used uh, WordPress, you're going to recognize pretty much the same things, right? So we have an excerpt, we have the post body. This is a, full, a rich text editor, which is, which is pretty cool because she can come in here and add uh, emojis or she can add links, she can add images, she can add pretty much whatever she wants and her post is here ready to go. Then we've got a bunch of people worry about SEO and all those things. And because you can also, and I'm gonna show you in the dynamic templates in, in a bit, you can also personalize those things. So we just have them here, right? Uh, you can edit what you want the title to be, the subscription, the description to be, the social image. And for her in particular, you can do this automatically so that every subscriber gets the exact same thing, which is what Substack does, which is what uh, Beehive does. but we wanted to give her a little bit more granular control. So she can, when she finishes here, she just copies this whole thing and pastes it down here as the email body. But if she has something that makes sense only in the email, but it won't make sense to have on a fixed blog post essentially forever, something like, okay, I have a launch coming up next week. I was on a podcast last week and, and you should watch it or you should go listen to it. She can just add it here in the email. She said, okay, for the email, I want this thing different. And she can also personalize the subject line and whatnot. And then if she checks this box, and I can show you the automations in a second, um, that just triggers the automation so that on her publishing date, which is right here, July 14, what happens is that the dynamic template, this one here, is published. So all these pages just come up. You have a new page come up right here and it goes up at the top like you normally would 
for a blog and it's emailed to her subscribers and it all works like for her. So as a user, this is what's really great for her as a user. She had us set it up once and now it just works. She doesn't care how it works. She doesn't care why it works. She just knows that I want to create a new post. I go in here. I create it. I check the box so that it is emailed. I make sure that the date is correct and boom, off it goes. So I don't know if you want me to show like something specific about the, the, the setup. Yeah. Well. So this is, this is, this is really clever. Um, what you've done here. Um, so some of the things that you're showing off, um, leverage some of the cool automation that is possible. So one of the questions that we got on the, on the live stream on Tuesday was like, how is this better than, you know, um, WordPress, or how is this better than, um, you know, some, some random CMS or whatever. Um, what you've got going here is some really interesting stuff. Obviously, you know, some of this stuff can be done in WordPress. You can obviously publish a page yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but some of this automation is, is really interesting. The fact that you're, you know, using fields in the record to, to, you know, obviously with conditions to send, you know, stuff to the email that you're publishing stuff on a publication date that, you know, you, you've got some really cool automation stuff happening here that integrates email and the page and everything. Can you show us a little bit about what, what that looks like? Yeah, of course. So if we go in here to the automations here in post, you're going to see that actually this is super simple. We've got literally four automations that's and, and actually it's really just three because this is one just to schedule to notify a person in my team so that they can go in there and make sure that the links and everything is ready uh it's this whole thing that i just explained runs on these four um on basically in these two automations so here we go first the publish post same thing when a post is created it just lands here Right. We have she currently doesn't have any, but we created two types of posts. So in case she just wants to create a regular blog, she can just tag those as blog. Everything else is TYPVT, which is the shorthand for her newsletter, which is take your power back Thursday. So um, once that happens, we update the post to to entries. And um, and here's the thing. If she, if the publication date is after today, because sometimes she runs late and she's remembering this on like Thursday morning that she needs to send it out, right? So if it is after today, here's what happens. It just waits until the publication date at 5 a.m. 5 in my time zone or in her time zone because she's the account owner. And then what happens is that we update the, the post is published to true. And that's what that's in here. That's in the dynamic template. I'm going to show you in a second. And um, it just updates it to published. And then we do this thing. This is a webhook that we send out to register all the, um, all the users who are signed up for the, all the contacts, sorry, who are signed up to receive the updates of the newsletter. And it registers them as recipients because that's another really cool thing. And I forgot about it. Now she has the ability to see which of her contacts have gotten which of her of her newsletters, right? Because they're they 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 we have that relationship between one and the other. Then we wait some period of time until the post is, is updated. I don't exactly remember if any field is updated. What is this? Oh, it it just it just keeps uh, updated the last modified, yeah. so that it the last modified field will will stay updated, and it just goes back and forth in that one. But here's the thing. I mean, this is this is as, as, as easy as it gets. Yeah. for the for the actual post itself to go live and here is the part where we send it to different recipients same thing when any of these triggers happens which is either ready to email is updated or the post is created and the ready to email is yeah. checked off then same thing we check to make sure that the date is correct and yep. depend to the to the wait and then once it matches the date field, we wait 15 minutes and that wait is just gives us enough time to create the, the relationship between the contacts mm. and, um, and then it sends it out. And this is a very, very, very simple um, template as well. It's just a, a super simple HTML template oh, uh, that, is. that is sent out. And this is it. The link to read it in the browser. We have this here a little... Um, a little opt-in, which has been working really well because some of her recipients actually still forward emails. To forward emails, other. yeah. So if somebody receives that, they can just click here and subscribe. And here mm -hmm. we go. It just goes 
the first name of the person, the body that she created in the, um, in the, in the custom object. And then the signature is, is in a way hard coded. So again, if she has a special event, if she decides, you know what, I'm not doing the challenge anymore. We just come in here, remove the challenge link and yep. add something else. And, uh, and like I said, she just, it just works. She doesn't yeah. have to be coming in here, copy pasting all the time and making sure that the links work and how it looks and send her herself a preview. It's just, it's just done, done once and, uh, and it's just there and it's working. And like I said, she's, she's really happy about this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. This is, this is really, really cool um, use case. Thank you so much for sharing it. One of the things that you brought up in there too is, um, is an interesting piece about this. Um, if you go to the, um, to the record, go to one of those post records again and, yeah. and show, just show them the, um, that like, you know, the, the template and the, and the publication status, uh, the page status or whatever. Um, yeah, exactly. So we're, uh, yeah, the post. You want to go over here? Um, it's, I don't know. Oh, no, the, the relationship. So let me actually go to one of the published ones. So if we go to one of these that have been published. We can actually see well, here. Here's all the recipients, yeah. And I, I, yeah, I made sure to remove the emails. So we can actually <laughs> see all the people who got that email. Yeah, that's so cool. Subscribe. So we're and able then, now when she gets a, somebody to schedule a, a consultation with her, we're able to see, you know what, this person has been on your list for six months and they've been getting all of these newsletters and they've been getting all of these things. That is another thing that people cannot do on WordPress because, I mean, you can see how many people visit each one of your pages, but you cannot easily tie it to your specific user because your CRM is not your CMS. And mm -hmm. so in this case, we're able to, to give the leads a score based on, okay, they visited X amount of posts. Cause we see that a lot. People will see one post and then they'll, they'll just binge read them. And when you have somebody who's just read 14 of your posts, well, that makes that person a lot more interested in your stuff. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, really cool setup. Uh, you've got here, Ernesto. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that probably do, uh, if we have uh, this is bonkers. Well done, um, cool. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Super cool use case, Ernesto. Yeah. Thank you so much for um, for showing it off, and um, and I'm really excited to see see what else you do uh, in the future with this thing. Yeah, um, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let me just, uh, let's see, can I show my screen here real quick? I'm gonna show one last thing here. Um, boom, oh, you've already got it, so I don't need to, I can stop sharing. Cool, um, one last thing I wanted to, I wanted to show on here um, is this thing here. Uh, what you can see, this is the, um, one of those posts that Ernesto was uh, just talking about. I've uh, logged into his uh, account. And um, what you can see here is that um, in this, you've got a pages tab. When you turn on dynamic content, you've got a pages tab. And, um, and uh, what you'll see in here is the different kinds of pages, the dynamic templates that you, or sorry, the page types that you've created here. And these are his posts. And these, this is the URL of this particular page type. You'll also see that there's um, a drop down field where you can select the template. And then the, the publication status, that's a switch. I'm not going to mess with it right now because if I turn that off, it would unpublish his page. What's really cool about this is that these are actually um, a couple of things, actually. Let me talk about two things here. One is that each individual uh, page type, in his case, these posts, can have multiple templates. Uh, and which is a really powerful feature that again, many of the CMSs out there um, are, are sorely missing. Um, that can, that's gonna get used in a lot of different ways. Imagine for example, you have um, a, an event and you have a page template for an event and there's a certain number of seats that are uh, you know, available in this event and, or there's a deadline to, to when you can stop signing up for this event. You don't wanna change the URL, but you wanna change the page at a certain time. And you don't wanna have to sit there you know, at, at you know, 11.59 p.m. at night or something whenever your thing expires and, and, and you know, unpublish the page and go into, you know, and mess the whole thing up, right? Instead of what you can do, it's just create two different templates for the same set of data. You can have an event template that says, hey, this is the event. Here's all the information about the event. Here, you know, sign up now. There's one template that's like the event is open for, for, for purchasing or whatever it is, signing up. And um, people can sign up. And then what you can do is 
have a second template that looks completely different. It might be the closed template. You missed it. Sign up here to learn about the next one, whatever it might be, right? And, uh, and then what you would do is just simply flip between these two templates and the page will completely change when you do that. What's, so that's the first thing that I wanted to show you is that there's multiple templates. You can have as many templates as you want for a particular page type. The URL won't change, but everything about the page can be different. That's really cool. Um, now, the next thing that's really cool is that because these are just normal fields in Entreport, you can actually change those fields using automation. So, for example, if you have, um, you know, if you want a, 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 an offer to expire at, you know, 1 p.m., you can create an automation that says when the offer, you know, when 1 p.m. comes along for this particular event or when the expiration date of this event comes along, then simply update this template field from the, the event is open to a different template. The event is closed template. And then boom, instantly that page will change. So you can use automation to completely change the page based on updates to the, to the record that you're talking about. That's really cool. You can do the same thing with this other stuff, like the, uh, the, the publication. So you can literally unpublish or republish a page or publish it the first time using automation. So a lot of really powerful stuff that is available here. I think that our next guest may um, actually be leveraging some of that stuff. So let's bring uh, Andrew on and we can show off an even, um, if you can believe it, an even more sophisticated use case. Now, um, many of you know Andrew from our community. He is just an all around awesome guy. He's in Australia. It's an odd time for him right now. He works with a bunch of our different customers. Uh, and one of those uh, happens to be his wife who runs a dance studio in um, Mullumbimbi, I believe. And, um, and what he has done is pretty much recreated like the full mind-body platform using dynamic content. And, uh, and um, he's going to show you uh, how he's done that. Andrew, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Tell, so um, start off by uh, talking to us about um, yourself, your business, and then, uh, and then tell us what you've, what you've done here. Yeah, so um, my journey with Entreport started about 2009, and um, I always was really drawn to the automation side of the um, the rules and the sequences. And so I got into helping small businesses using it for creative and cutting edge solutions in their businesses pretty early on, and that's really what I've always loved doing with Entreport. And so when custom objects became a thing. Um, it allowed for more complex relationships to happen between the different entities that a business needs to work with. And so that then led to dynamic content using the data from those different records in those objects to actually interact with the customer or with the admin team and things like that. So that's when things like um, creating your own apps becomes possible. Because really, essentially, like you said in your live the other day, Landon, um, really a web application is just the ability for you to interact with data. Um, mm -hmm. And at a, at a very basic level, Entreport can now do that with dynamic pages and you can make it really quite advanced. So what I wanted to do is push the envelope a little bit with um, where Entreport's at right now and um, probably where it's heading and to make sure that that direction is is definitely where the platform is going. Um, so what I did was used all the features I could in this build for WeMove Studio, which has a dance studio in, in Malambimbi, which is not operational at the moment because um, it got flooded in our recent floods thanks to climate change. So we are struggling a little bit with that um, side of things, but what I decided to take the time to recreate the systems in Entreport. Um, and so, uh, cool. yeah. Awesome, there we go. All right, so what you're looking at at the moment is um, is an Entre page that has some... Let me just open up that window myself. There we go. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background on, on what, like, a, a studio may want. Or, so these days, if you're running a, a dance studio or a yoga business, you might be hiring mm -hmm. facilitators or teachers to run classes, and you're going to need to pay them based on attendance and that's, that's the model that we used anyway with um, We Move Studio. And so you don't want to have an admin person that you have to pay to kind of check people. Or you want people to be able to check themselves in. 
So there are systems like MindBody and other tools like that, which allow dance studios to pay a subscription to be able to list all of their scheduled classes, which are coming up and in a timetable, and then for people to sign up and be able to check into their own classes. So what we've done is um, replicated this using different objects within an Entreport account with the relationships to allow a facilitator to lead a class at a specific time on a timetable and for members to be able to check into those classes or cancel um, them, their own uh, classes themselves. And um, so, for example, I'm, I'm logged in currently under this My Account page. Uh, if I go to my dashboard here, I can see how many credits I have. I can buy some more credits. I can activate a subscription instead if I want. And I can see my upcoming classes, which I can cancel if I want to. So essentially what it means is that it's a, it's a huge cost saving when your facilitators and your members can manage the data themselves because then they're just adding their credit card to the system they're buying credits. If I buy five more credits, I can just click this. This runs a webhook in an automation in Entreport to run the card on file to purchase five more credits. And then as that loads up, it'll add the credits in, in here. So that just takes a, a couple of seconds to, to load it in the back end. So um, yeah, that's, that's what we're working on. You can see now there's seven credits. If I go to the timetable, oh, and, and maybe I'll just reiterate that this is a membership site. I've signed in with Entreport's own membership site feature. This is an Entreport membership site. So these pages are linked and I'm showing the data as per the visitor. So if I'm, if I'm looking at this page from a, it's a dynamic, uh, this one isn't a dynamic page, but the, the other pages are showing my data because it's a dynamic page. So it's showing my particular unique ID under my profile, and then it's able to show my sets, my three bookings, et cetera, and my upcoming classes because it's a dynamic page. Um, so yeah, going back to the timetable to, to check into a class, for example, I can just click check in and then that'll update. And you know, I can, I've, I've, I've limited this to just showing a few days at a time. Um, that you can just scroll across to see. And so that's being done with an Entreport form that just loads on the page in the background, um, removes a credit, and then there's a dynamic, uh, there's, there's another record that's created, is this one here, which then, um, you know, I, I can then attend that class. So the way that this would work for the facilitator is they would, they would come to the studio, they would see who's already checked in, um, they'd be able to mark those people off that they've already paid because they've, it says it in the system. And then mm -hmm. they can start their class without having to, you know, waste, waste any more time trying to get people checked in or paid and things like that. So that's really where the, the, the benefit is of this kind of system. Um, the other thing is, you know, knowing exactly what everyone has paid for a particular class in a database allows us then to run an algorithm across every class time to know exactly the, 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 the payment to be paid to a facilitator that's run that class at the end of the month. Yeah. So I can probably jump into the Entreport account. I'm using a Sandbox account to build this in right now. So you'll see this at the top of Sandbox accounts. Right. Um, that purpose. Um, maybe before I jump into the Entreport account, I'll just show you a couple of these other pages. We have also um, the account details, which is just for them to update their own information on the page, which is a typical thing. I can update my credit card on file, which is just using Entreport's own credit card update and update passwords. Um, my payment history can be shown. So I just purchased that five, uh, five class pass just now. I can view my invoice. So that's just what got transacted. And um, yeah, so that's a bit of a, I, for, for me, that's the basic features that you're going to need for someone managing their own account in, in this kind of business. Super um, cool. 
Show us um, the website too, the website, and then uh, and then the um, and then what it looks oh, like on the inside. Yeah, yeah. So this is still the website, but what we can do is show you some of the other pages. On so the yeah, the, the 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 public website when you're not logged in, I guess is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'll just go to. We did build all of this onto um, onto pages. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using some like some little bit of um, HTML and CSS as well as other um, like existing entreport features. You know, yeah, like clearly I should stuff. just I should just hop in there. I was going to say that later, but like some of the features that you saw in Andrew's uh, uh, pages that we just they're they're, they're not um, like right out of the box stuff. He's done some fancy things here um, to you know that that kind of schedule is something that he's used some CSS and JavaScript probably to to make that kind of um, happen. But um, <clears throat> but uh, but the, the database and a lot of the stuff that you see here is kind of like right out of the box um, sort of stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, it's it's this page for some reason right now isn't isn't loading. This is probably because we are just pushing you live right now. It's um, shoot. Well, let's not show that then. If you can come back to this, this is a pretty awesome feature that I wanted to show. It's basically using um, the we'll wait for it to, to load up if you can. I'll go into the account first maybe and then we can come back to it. But um, basically what I'm doing is listing all of the classes on one page and all of the facilitators on one page based on their, their own records too, which looks really nice. So jumping into the account, um, are you seeing the Entreport account now? Yeah. Okay. So under contacts, I've got a subgroup called facilitators. And in a facilitator record, we can um, open up that contact. And there's just some extra fields in here that we have, which are the related to the, 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 the facilitator. So we have the name, the, the facilitator's image and body shot, their pay tier, description. These are all custom some fields that I can add into it. So I didn't create a new custom object for this because it's really a contact that just has some additional uh, input. And then, and then there are classes that are related to this particular facilitator, the kind of classes that they teach. And then there's the class times, which is when those, time, uh, when those classes are actually running. So that's some basic relationships in the contact area. Um, so there's... There's a, an object called classes. So these are, again, they have their own information. So if you think about what Ernesto showed in his, um, in his uh, uh, account before, this is very similar in that we can send emails with this kind of information. We can send members information about classes um, we, can, we can create pages that pull this in and show this information dynamically across the website. Um, so again, we have images for the classes uh, and, and class times related to them. The next object that's important between classes and contacts is the class times. And a class time is where you've got a specific time of a class run by a facilitator and, a, and and it's got the, the specific class there. Um, here we can also track the number of check-ins and the class limit, um, and that will allow the class to be open or closed or booked out or canceled based on automations run, based on the triggers of these fields. So for example, if there's a class limit of say 20, and then suddenly there are 18, uh, sorry, only there's only one check-in available, then we can automatically show on the page, little notices saying um, you have to join the wait list or something like that if you miss out on that class. Um, I can probably open up one of the dynamic pages. I'll see if this works. So this is a this is a dynamic page for It'll an work. individual class. It'll all work now. You, we just needed to get you signed up for um, for dynamic content. It's all it's all enabled now. Awesome. So on on this page. This is the class's own page. You can see the title, description, previous classes, and upcoming classes, and image. And I've, I've 
go on there by clicking the single class URL here, which is just one of the dynamic pages um, there. If I want to see all classes, which I was trying to show before, this is what that looks like. So this is kind of like that grid view that's coming out very soon to be done a lot easier within Entreport. The feature is dynamic lists. Dynamic lists it allows us to pull records from a particular object and then display them as we want on the page using a little bit of extra um, CSS. So if I, as I scroll through here, you can see that, you know, it's a really beautiful way of showing um, all of the classes that are available in the studio. And this is all just pulling directly from the, the classes, um, um, the classes object. So if I add a new class, it'll show up automatically on this page. Amazing. We've even got little um, tags that we're, we're playing with, like this one here that says popular on the Zumba. Mm -hmm. um, if I go to the Zumba class here, that's coming from a particular little, I um, can't remember exactly where that is, but somewhere in here. Oh, feature been, banner. Yeah, feature banner. So you can add little images for feature banners, which will pop up on there too. Um, so that is... That's that one. And then the other one, the other design we have facilitators. This is all of the facilitators. So in a contact record, we get a profile picture and then these are all just showing up like this as well. Mm -hmm. If I particular facilitator, it opens up their own page, which is their dynamic, their dynamic page. And then upcoming and previous classes be shown um, under that too, which is the link dynamic records. So that's the, the, the front end view of some of the, um, the way that this content comes from directly from the Entreport account. Super cool. And did you, um, did you mention that you built a, uh, a version or some pages for uh, like video classes, uh, recordings, or being able to see this stuff um, asynchronously? Yeah, so we, we're building that. We do have an online classes section in, mm -hmm. the, in our original, um, yeah, in our, in, during COVID, there was a need to have online classes. So we did some recording classes. This hasn't been completely built out yet, but the idea here would be that you would just add the Vimeo URL to one of these pages and then there's, a, there's, there's videos as well. So just similar to how you would run a membership site with courses and videos, we'd run this the same way. So they would have their own pages, that um, video uh, classes, online classes that um, have a video that come available like that. When we were running, when we were streaming live classes during um, lockdowns and things like that, we used Vimeo's live stream feature so that the link never changed. So once you pa paste the Vimeo live stream link into, a, into an object, in, uh, into a record in Entreport, mm -hmm. even when it's live and then when it's the recording, it's the same link. Yeah. So Entreport's own dynamic page feature never has to change. Once you've posted that in there, it's going to stay the same. Yeah. Um, and it's really good for that feature. Um, don't have a, don't have an archive page, video page yet for that because it's not something we've built yet. Um, so really what I'm doing with this is taking a use case that I think will utilize this, utilize um, the, the database structure that Entreport offers now um, and then if you really think about what the exciting thing is, once you've got all these structures in place, is the automation of the communications that can possibly happen. So if you, if you just start to imagine someone wants to sign up for the first time um, to, a, to the studio, you can run Facebook ads to a community where a new, stu new studio is opened. We can sell something like a introductory pass when, when they purchase just that pass, Entreport knows which ad they came from with U tables. We can, we can um, ask them questions in a survey, what kind of classes they like, and start presenting those kinds of classes to them on the dynamic pages that they're looking at mm -hmm. instead of everything. Um, we, can, we can give them a experience, their own experience on the website based on the things that they're interested in. That's what dynamic, a dynamic website can do. So once someone's logged in and we know who they are, we can then start um, uh, creating or tailoring the experience for them. Um, if someone doesn't come to a class for a couple of weeks, 
we have that data to trigger from last class attended time that sort of thing um who is their favorite teachers so we can be sending emails and sms messages based on the actual interactions they're having with the app the web application to make sure that they're getting a tailored experience and that's really what businesses need now for to to be cutting edge in today's competitive world you really need to be able to um to be able to create a really great experience for people that's mm. going to be the point of difference between mm. different uh different businesses moving forward if you can create an experience for someone that they've never experienced before with your business then they're likely to stick around your lifetime value of that customer is going to increase and they're going to tell more people about it yep Absolutely. Andrew, this is amazing. Um, you've really taken this thing to the next level and um, it's super exciting to see. It's obviously um, fulfilling, uh, you know, a lot of the vision that we hoped, um, you know, that, that we hoped for as, as we built this thing over the last couple of years. You, obviously, you, you know, I haven't uh, mentioned this yet, but Andrew was one of the inspirations behind this whole, this whole, um, this whole thing a long time ago. He kind of whispered a, a, a wish list item in, in my ear a couple of I don't know, three, four years ago, something like that. And, um, and at first I didn't understand what he was talking about, but then my mind started going and in, we ended up here, which is, which is, <laughs> which is a whole, whole lot of level. Yeah. We went, we went nuts with it. Um, but this is, this has been, um, you know, you're, you're the guy who's taken it the farthest so far, which is amazing. Um, a lot of that stuff, like I said, so some of that stuff is, is pretty, uh, customized, but, um, definitely demonstrates the direction this thing is headed. Um, and you know, all that stuff that you're doing is going to be the kind of thing that you'll be able to do right out of the gate, uh, in, 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 in coming months. So thank you so much uh, again for, for joining us, Andrew. Um, really appreciate your time and, and, and for being here. A weird, weird time uh, there in Australia. What time is it there for you right now? Um, sorry, I was just talking over you. Um, it's um, it's eight fifteen in the morning, and I'm oh. currently in Canberra. We're going uh, snowboarding later today, so that's oh wow, exciting. For okay, other side of the hemisphere. What I was just going to say, Landon, just oh. to wrap up, is for people who are looking at this and seeing the complexity, maybe people who use Entreport regularly who are watching this and new people. I guess the the purpose of uh oh. Uh oh, hang on. You're we're losing you, Andrew. Oh man. So Andrew seems to be in a uh snowboarding town. Oops. <laughs> Are you there now? Sorry, it looks like I got disconnected. That's all right. Well, you're back. So tell us you were about to say the purpose of Yeah, so the 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 purpose of what I was showing was um obviously like you said land and it's a little bit complicated in the way that we've put it together but i guess that's the that's the beauty of entreport you can take it to that level but you can mm -hmm. also use the pre-existing features and build it yourself in a more um, simpler form but what mm -hmm. i'm hoping um, will happen is these kinds of ways of pulling the things together and these lego blocks that we can pull together can become much easier to make as beautiful as what we've done here with just a little bit of extra um, CSS and JavaScript on some of those pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, we have a long roadmap for, for um, continuing to enhance this thing, including templates and stuff like that. They're going to be coming very soon. Um, lots of, lots of uh, amazing stuff to come. But let's talk, uh, let's switch gears. So Andrew, thank you once again. I really appreciate you getting up early. Um, go get some uh, fresh turns. It's hot here, really hot here today. So uh, <laughs> I'm jealous a little bit of Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, okay. So um, let's get into the next thing. Show my screen here. Um, there we go. Yeah. Um, how do we get this thing? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it's happening. It's happening right now. In fact, we launched this thing a couple of hours ago. Um, so you already have um, access to this or can get access to this thing right now. How do you do it? Um, just log into your Entreport account. Click to your account Um your kind of, it says account, I think, or my account in the upper right-hand corner under the little man uh, symbol there. And, um, and click start trial. You'll get a two-week trial of the various um, packages and, uh, and you, can, you'll, you can get access to this thing um, right away. So um, how much does it cost? This is the thing that people have been asking about. This is the thing that we've been struggling with for a long time. So I want to um, share uh, a couple of thoughts about this and, and then I'll explain exactly how this works. Um, 
let's go back to to the to me for a second here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so here's the thing. This is obviously no longer the realm of a marketing automation platform. This is not something you're going to find in, in any of our competitors, right? You're not going to find this in a keep or a, or an active campaign or a drip or any, any, anything like this. This is, this is now a new category of, of, of platform. And, and, uh, and it's moving into, uh, it's not like we're the first people to think of this stuff. There are other um, competitors in this space, apps like Bubble and, and Ninox, and there's a QuickBase, a bunch, of, a bunch of companies that have been doing stuff like this for a long time. Um, but the way those, those apps are priced is very different, right? In, in Entreport's history, we've been able to price things based effectively on, on the number of contacts you have, which kind of reflects the database size and the number of emails that you send out and the pages that you host. Actually, we haven't even charged for that. Um, and that's, uh, that reflects kind of the throughput of kind of the work that you make our servers do on your behalf. And so we get at a price through those two kind of variables. And that makes perfect sense for uh, an automation company for a marketing automation company. When we start to get into um, the kind of functionality that you've just seen with Ernesto and with, with, um, with Andrew there, things get a little more complicated. They get a little more complicated because um, what we're giving you is, is um, something a lot more like a programming language, really. It's a very simplified programming language, of course, and it's something that you don't need to know any code for. You're going to be able to kind of drag and drop your way to building most of that stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the ways that you can kind of impact our systems and the load that you can put on a system like ours um, with these tools is very different. And, uh, and so we've had to think a lot about how to make sure that... Um, that we can price this thing in a way where you don't end up costing us a ton more money than we're charging you. Um, so that, that's been um, a bit of a trick. And, um, and so what we've figured out is that there are um, a few different things that we can, that we can track and, and charge for that get at the different ways that you can um, cost us a lot of, um, of load and in and, and, and kind of server costs and stuff like that. And those basically are, are how much stuff you're making a store for you, um, how much, how many unique records, uh, how many different kinds of objects are, are, are getting pulled from, from our database. Cause every time you pull a dynamic object, it's hitting our database and, and that's work and, 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 and uh, data over the, over the wires that we got to pay for. And then, um, and then some stuff about uh, how many records you're, showing every month. And we've actually figured out that there's different use cases. Sometimes you have a zillion records, you know, you store a ton of records, but you won't show them very often. Other times there's a, you know, that might be something like a, a big database of products or something. And, and people might eventually search for products and you might have 10,000 products, but you know, every month only 300, 300 of them ever get shown something like that. Um, a blog is like the opposite case. You might have just a couple hundred uh, blogs or a couple dozen blog posts, but they might get viewed a zillion times every month, right? So uh, we've priced this thing in a way that kind of makes it as reasonable as we can make it um, while capturing the, the various use cases. And so there's, there's a few different factors. We're going to show it to you right now, kind of how this works. There's also <laughs> an additional complication, and that is that um, that uh, as of today, Entreport has changed its pricing model for new customers. So uh, most of the people that are watching this right now are um, are existing customers, I would presume. And uh, and if that's you, there's, it won't affect you because um, we're that is existing is grandfathered in to your existing accounts, um, which is which is good news for you because the new prices are um, let's call it more reflective of the value that we're providing. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, but you'll be excited to have your existing grandfathered accounts. So the way dynamic content is going to work is just a little bit different depending on whether you have a, a, an older account or a new account. So let's go on to this, uh, this thing here. So this is what, um, this is what it's going to look like when you, when you go to create uh, a dynamic content add-on. Um, it's going to, it's going to look like, um, 
it's going to look like this. There's there's four different levels that you can that you can add. Uh, the first three you can add yourself, and the fourth one is kind of a custom level. If you have something that's weird and you want to get creative with us, then call us up and we'll figure it out. That's going to be for kind of heavier users and stuff like that. Um, we want to make we want to make it work, right? Um, but uh, but off the shelf, there's going to be these three levels. They're called starter and and builder and architect. And what's going to happen is that that you can add any of these levels to any Entreport account. So you've got your, your basic plus and pro and, and uh, enterprise Entreport accounts. Any of these can be added to any one of those accounts. So you can have a basic account and you can, you can add a starter or a builder or an architect dynamic CMS add-on. What's gonna happen is that you're going to get custom objects included with your dynamic CMS add-on. So obviously everything that you've seen here today uh, kind of relies on our custom objects feature. That feature has been reserved in the past for pro and enterprise users. But today, if you add a dynamic CMS add-on, you're gonna get that custom objects functionality included because you need it, right? So the starter one is gonna be great for like a blog, right? If we like we we showed you on Tuesday, you you can have your blog posts, your blog comments. You're going to be all set. Two different objects. You're going to be able to to uh, you know make those dynamic, and uh, and and you'll be all set for an additional forty nine dollars a month. Um, a very fair price, we think, for for the kind of functionality that you're getting there. Uh, obviously, if you want to go farther with things, if you're going to do you know courses and lessons and forums or or the kind of stuff that you've seen uh, today, that's going to take maybe a couple of more objects. And so you'll need to uh, upgrade to a builder account, um, architect account. You can go even further than this. And uh, and um, and then, of course, there's no limit to the number of objects you can have. In my accounts, I've got dozens, uh, and you can have, you know, unlimited, uh, unlimited views, up to five million records per object in in Entreport. So, uh, lots of capability here under the hood. Um, but uh, this, but you'll get up to eight uh, custom objects included in uh, an architect plan. The next couple of features or a couple of, uh, of things here you want to look at is the record stored per custom object. And so there's a limit to those. That's about kind of like how much data we're storing for you. So you can see there a couple thousand records in a starter account, a builder account, architect account has 25,000 records that you can store per custom object. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. Now, for those of you who are on grandfathered accounts, this is a little bit of a, uh, of a of a tricky thing here. We're trying to figure out how to make it work for you. But some of you are on grandfathered accounts and, you, and you're and you on pro, pro and enterprise plans and you've already had uh, custom objects and you haven't had any limit on the number of records in those custom objects. So you're going to continue to have that. However, what's going to happen here, you haven't had a number, uh, uh, any record on the, sorry, any limit on the number of custom objects or limit on the number of custom objects in those in those accounts. Um, but that's not going to work for us if you start using that data to make things all dynamic. So so because that's where the load starts to come in. So what's going to happen for you if you've been on a pro account and um, and you and you uh, and you sign up for for dynamic CMS what this custom objects included is going to mean for you is that you can use two of your custom objects with the dynamic CMS. So that means you can make dynamic pages from two objects, or you can make a dynamic block from two objects. You can use the dynamic functionality against two of the objects. Okay. Um, record stored per custom object um, is, so if one of those objects that you're using has you know more than twenty five thousand objects? You're gonna you're gonna have to talk to us about pricing on that. Now we're giving a waiver for contacts. Um, we know that some of you are gonna want to have um, you know profile pages, for example, in a fancy in a fancy membership site, and you'll want to use um, you'll want to use contacts as a as a dynamic object. You'll need to um, have a you'll need to it'll count as one of your custom objects. So if you connect if you connect contacts to a to um, a dynamic page or a dynamic block, that'll count as one of your objects included here. But we're going to give a waiver for the records stored, 
limitation for the contacts object because you're already sort of paying us for that um, with your contact limit uh, in the in the in your normal account. Um, but other objects, custom objects, are going to need to follow these limits. Now, the last thing here is the unique dynamic records displayed per month versus total dynamic records displayed per month. So if you think about a blog, um, you probably only have, you know, a couple dozen blog posts and each one of those is like a unique record, right? So a blog post, a blog, any, a unique blog post can be shown, you know, 500 unique blog posts can be shown each month under the starter plan. So that'll be all your blog posts, right? You don't have more than 500 blog posts, most of you. But then you've got total dynamic records displayed per month. That's the, like the number of visitors, the number of times those, those blog posts get displayed. Okay, so you've got 10,000 views effectively for those 500 blog posts is kind of how that works. And so you can see that, um, that those, those levels go up um, as, you, as you pay a little more. And then again, if you have an unusual use case or, or you're a heavy user, feel free to give us a call and we'll see if we can't work something out that, that works for you and for our, uh, our engineers and, and systems administrators. Uh, notice here that you've got, um, you've got uh, access to most of the features at each one of those levels. There is a couple of features that um, are limited to the, the kind of higher level plans, the architect and the visionary plans. The first one is available today. That's called um, dynamic lists. A very powerful feature. We've talked about it before. Uh, you can learn about it in in uh, in Entreport University, I think. Wait, do we have a video about that yet? Maybe not. But I did do a video uh, for uh, about dynamic lists uh, in the Facebook community. It's probably on YouTube too. So um, there's definitely resources there about what that is. It's a little bit of a kind of a coding language to where you can get real fancy. Andrew Andrew, Andrew utilized that heavily for his um, for his. Um, for his demonstration. Uh, and then the next one is the database driven dynamic emails. That's not uh, out yet, will be in the next uh, several months, um, but it's basically gonna allow you to create emails use in, in the same way that you can kind of imagine we're creating pages now, you're gonna be able to create dynamic content in your individual email. So each, each email will be um, kind of customizable um, using the data in your, um, data in your account. So uh, very powerful stuff uh, coming there. Um, but we'll talk about that part later. Um, so most of you will uh, probably be happy starting out with a starter or builder plan. Some of you are gonna, who are getting fancy will need to step it up, uh, but there it goes. Also, this isn't shown on here, um, but as uh, William said, can I click on, on William's uh, post here? you'll be able to uh, add custom objects for $20 per month. So um, if you go over your limit, right? If you have two custom objects and you, but you need one more and you don't want to upgrade to a builder plan for an extra 50 bucks, we'll allow you to add just one more custom object for 20 bucks a month. So you'll be at 49.79 instead of 99 for an additional custom object. Okay, a blog will be one, yeah. So let's go down and, uh, and start again with some of these questions. Um, Pam Pierce asks, is custom objects required for dynamic content? Well, pretty much, right? You can make dynamic content using uh, contacts, but I think most of the use cases that, um, that you and our other users are gonna come up with uh, are gonna require you to create custom objects, courses and lessons and stuff like that. So yes, but as you can see, you get that uh, with the dynamic CMS add-on. Um, Patrick, so a membership site can show customer specific info now? Yeah, well, actually always could. We always could use um, uh, merge fields inside of a membership site, pulling merge field data from the, uh, from the record into a membership site. But this is, this is far more powerful than that. You can, create, um, you can create full pages based on any custom object record. You can take data from the visitor and, and you know, put it on a page that is that is uh, built based on a, uh, another custom object record. You can also now um, show information that's in a sub collection of a contact record. So for example, if you wanted to show their purchase history, you could, um, you can do that, select that as the source of your dynamic block data and boom, you'll see all their purchase history right in the, um, yeah, invoices, payments, all that stuff is, uh, is uh, well, purchase history, transactions. Those are the kind of things you can, you can use um, to show, um, 
to show in a dynamic block. Let's see, what else we got? You don't have to, I couldn't be sure on that. Uh, if we identify the user, you can show them all sorts of stuff. Hey, William's answering questions, awesome. Um, I didn't realize that OP membership site could uh, do that based on who, oh, that's the same thing, more or less. Um, key to personalization, do, 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 do. Okay, good, awesome stuff, Colton says, great. Um, Let's see, let's see. I took it for granted that I have the beta. You did. Um, now you got to start a trial. Lots of contacts, but fewer students, even fewer in a specific course. Yeah, so if you're doing um, students, courses, lessons, that sounds to me like courses and lessons. Um, that's You'll be able to build a very slick um, kind of typical membership site for a training program with courses and lessons. That's two objects. Uh, you wouldn't have more than 500 lessons or, uh, you know, or 500 courses. So a starter plan would work great. Now, if you want to start getting into comments, for example, on a particular lesson, lesson comments, um, you would, that would be another object. And so you could add that for 20 bucks or you could move up to builder and get uh, five objects, which would then allow you to also build a blog with blog comments. So um, kind of that's how, that's how that works. Um, let's see, companies do not count towards these. Um, that is questionable, William. I think uh, if you use companies in a dynamic, uh, in a dynamic, um, in a dynamic block, it, it will count towards these. Um, it doesn't count against your, you can turn it on, but if you use, if you connect companies to a dynamic, um, to a dynamic page or a dynamic block, that is gonna that is gonna count. Um, let's see, uh, what else do we got here? A blog will be one. You'll be able to add twenty more. So excited! I'm glad I built my membership uh, on OP instead of WordPress. Wow, that's right. Good move, uh, Esperanza. Um, let's see, Merge Hill had limitations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Um, absolutely true. This is much more powerful than merge fields. You'll be able to do all kinds of, of um, really cool stuff. Um, will the blog object will be for free inside the community? So the blog object, you're going to need to have a, uh, a plan that allows you to turn on the blog object. So what, what uh, Yamil here is asking is um, somebody, I guess, is... is is talking about templates. So uh, unfortunately we weren't able to get this ready for release. We were trying really hard, um, but it didn't happen. And we wanted to get this out to you because we know you're antsy to get it and we're antsy to get it to you. But very soon we are deep in the project of creating um, app templates. So soon enough, you're going to be able to go into your admin section of your account and just go kind of like you can turn on companies or deals today. You're going to be able to turn on a blog or turn on courses and lessons. And there's going to be a whole setup there for you where we've built the objects. We've built all the fields. We've built some templates for you. We've even built some automations and some layouts for your data. So it becomes really easy to kind of get going with a blog. In order to turn that on, you're going to need to have at least a starter pack because that requires two objects for our for the blog template. It's the, the, the blog posts and the blog comments. Um, and courses and lessons will be, uh, I think, another two or three objects. So you'll have to, you know, get a plan that accounts for what you want to turn on. So that's kind of how that works. We're also going to have a template um, for a forum, a user's forum that allows you to kind of create threaded uh, conversations. You know, people can create, ask a question and it'll show up in the list of questions and you can click on it. And there's a conversation about that, kind of like a Reddit, like a simple Reddit sort of thing. Um, uh, there'll be a template for that. I think we got some other stuff coming too. Uh, maybe some private messaging. So if you want to, you know, if you're, uh, a chiropractor or whatever, and you want to have a private messaging system for to message your uh, clients, something like that, um, that'll be in there um, happening. Okay. Ooh, when can I sell dresses? Um, okay, down the road. Yeah, so those of you who are in e-com, um, you're starting to get the sense that this starts this starts to feel more like a Shopify every day. Like, why can't I use uh, put products in here and, and put them on a page and sell them? And we agree, you, you, we're not quite there yet. You're gonna need to be able to kind of dynamically cr add items to a checkout form and then and then be able to check out. And that is definitely on the roadmap. We've got our eye on that prize, um, but we're, you know, we're getting there step by step. Not, it's not gonna be um, pretty challenging. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be pretty challenging to do that today. I don't think you'll be able to, but soon. Um, Pop Jazz asks, is search uh, available. And the answer to that is not yet, but boy, is it on the top of our list. It's, uh, 
in the top five next projects up. Uh, we've got a plan for that. It's going to be super slick. Um, and it's coming. Not only search uh, down the road, down the list a little farther, you'll be able to do stuff like filters and sort and everything. So you can kind of take your, your blocks and, and do exactly what you're imagining. Sort and filter through a list of products, for example, or, or blog posts or whatever it might be. Um, very cool. Um, let's see. Comments, schmomments. Who wants the hassle of blog comments? Amen, sister. Screw that noise. Um, all right. What are the next five projects, please? <laughs> Everybody all up in our grill. All right. I feel like we've gotten there today. Um, 340. We've done our hour. Um, I encourage you to give this thing a shot. Go to your, your accounts uh, account tab. Yes. Start a free trial. You get two weeks for free. And special offer today um, for viewers of this thing. Here's what's going to happen. Where's my thing? Um, okay. This is a bit. Uh oh. I've lost it all. Never mind. Here's my, I've lost my whole situation. There it is. Special offer. Show the screen. <clears throat> if you sign up for Dynamic CMS in the next 30 days, we're going to throw in a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute consultation with one of the, our Dynamic CMS specialists. We've got a, uh, a group of people in the company here who have really kind of dove in and figured this thing out and have gotten good at it. And we're going to block off some time and do kind of a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. We're going to do that um, after you've had that, um, you know, you signed up for a free trial and you've kind of like played with it. You've watched the videos. We don't want to do like a from scratch training. That's not going to be uh, a, the way to use that time because there's a lot of resources for kind of how to use these features. Go to Entreport University, go to the web apps course, watch that. It's only a few videos. It's, you know, not even an hour, I don't think. Um, so definitely watch that. Play around with it. Make a template. Make a custom object. Kind of get familiar with things a little bit and then jump on a call with one of our people and uh, and make a plan because um, the the kind of the setup is the most crucial piece to this thing getting the objects right getting the relationships right figuring out what the page types are going to be what the templates are going to be kind of how the automations are going to work once you've got the framework of the thing everything else falls into place and it becomes really easy to build what you want to build. It's the, it's kind of that, that initial thinking about the objects and the relationships and what you need to make your vision come alive. That um, takes just a little bit of experience. Um, you know, if you're a database guy, you're going to already understand how this works and it's going to be, it's going to be easy. You won't need to talk to us, but if you're newer to this and this is, feels a little confusing, 30 minutes with one of our people is going to set you straight and on the right path. So, Sign up for Dynamic CMS in the next 30 days. We're going we're gonna to do that for you um, to make sure you get going and off and running um, correctly. So thanks again for being here. Um, we have to sign up for beta like everybody else. Let's see, in the university, oh yeah, the university, by the way, Entreport University, which is at entreport.com forward slash university, that whole thing built using Dynamic CMS, um, everything about it. Check out the library page, forward slash university, forward slash library. Uh, there's a link to it also that shows all the courses in, on one page. That was built with dynamic lists. Um, it's all dynamic. We add a new course. We don't have to go mess with those pages. We, we, you know, we, you know, it's all just records in our Entreport account and completely dynamic. Everything's linked together. It's just, it's just beautiful how it all works. So, um, yes, if you are already using, thanks for the question, uh, Lisa. If you are on beta already, you and you log in, you'll see a message and it's going to say, hey. Um, we just launched this thing live. It, your stuff's all, all it is, is all still working, but the features, the dynamic content features are going to appear to be missing. Um, so the, your dynamic templates kind of menu will be gone and stuff like that. Um, so in order to get that back, you just click on the button that's right in that pop-up or go to the account thing and sign up for a free trial and all your stuff will come back. In the meantime, we're not taking down any of your pages. Everything is still working the way it's meant to. We've just kind of hidden the feature now that it's live so that you just jump in there, sign up for an account and, and you'll get a free trial and, um, and often, often running, um, you uh, go. Um, so again, you guys, thanks for being here. We'll move the conversation to Facebook. Um, really excited to see what you guys build with this thing now that it's out in wider availability. Um, it's a really exciting project for our entire team here. And we're going to keep cranking on this over the next um, you know, several quarters and, and years, really. So we've got a lot of, of plans for this thing. So what you're getting now is a very robust 
V1, but so much more to come. In fact, a couple of major features are coming next week. Um, grid mode, the ability to create your dynam dynamic blocks uh, kind of horizontally, uh, the way that Andrew sort of showed it. He did it with custom CMS, but you'll be able to do it real easy in entre pages uh, it, next week, I think. And, uh, and then another feature that's too complicated to explain right now, but, um, but it'll be really useful for, for some of you in certain situations. Um, so thanks for being here. Thanks for playing with us. Uh, talk to you online. Um, cheers. <laughs>